five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, fucking up our opening as usual, but here we are. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we got a guest to talk to. Once a week, we do a ritual. If I don't do it, I'm going to die. I, I, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, what, do, what do you call it? Uh, uh, when you believe it. Uh, you see, my mind is going blurry bubbles brown. First sign of dementia. Uh, um, oh, well. You know, I, it's kind of like a lucky charm that once a week I speak to Larry Bubbles Brown. It's a ritual. You know what I find? What, what's happening to me lately, it, this always turns out to be the most depressing time of the week when I talk to Bubs, but I can unload <laughs> on him because he understands the depression. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I've been taking these pills uh, to take care of my neuropathy, which make me a bit loopy. And part of the thing is you forget shit, all right? Here's the latest thing that's happening to me. I come up, and I can't come up with a simple word to describe something like I just had that problem. Um, I, I use the term lucky charm. I really want to say superstition is what I wanted to say. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I can't come up with the word superstition. So I come up with a word, in many cases, that is more complicated than the one I'm looking for. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, how come I can come up with that word, you know, but anyway, how come I can remember certain movie stars, but I can't remember others? Do you ever have that happen? Bigger, huh? well, they had a bigger impact on you. Well, I can't, uh, I really have trouble remembering names. No, but I, I came up with a name the other night, and I said, how did I come up with that name? You know, I can't remember. Sometimes I'm always saying, hey, she's the girl who was in that thing, you know? And this guy, I just, off the top of my head, oh, that was so-and-so. And I went, oh, how did I come up with that name? You know, most people don't even know the actor I was talking about. And I came up with that name. And it was like from, I don't know, the 30s or something like that. Well, you've got vast movie knowledge. You know, uh, Roscoe Yates. I just came up with that name. Do you know Roscoe Yates? No. <laughs> well, look him up. Okay. You know. By the way, do you have that book where you ask me questions about stuff? Uh, it's not. I don't know where it is. Somewhere you, around here. Oh, you lost it, huh? It's around. I was thinking of act. I was going to ask you this that uh, I was doodling around the internet and I came across uh, Chuck McCann. Yeah. And you said you knew him. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, he turned out he was in when I was young. I I saw this movie that. Profoundly depressed me. The heart is a lonely hunter. Uh huh. And he was in that. Yeah. And I thought, oh yeah, you know him. So that's. Pretty... What What did he play? Did he play a retard or something? Yeah, something like that. And. Uh, oh wait a minute! We can't say the word retard anymore. You can't a, say a, that. A uh, a, a, a a mentally challenged. Mentally person? challenged. <laughs> <laughs> or semi-capable memory challenged. You and then be, I looked up the yeah. author of the uh, the woman that wrote the uh, movie or the book, Carson McCullers, and she had an interesting life. And mm -hmm. like she was uh, married to a man, but she liked women. And this was like in the 1930s. And I just you just wonder how people got through stuff like that back then. Well, I always understood women who liked other women because I like women. So I I feel we have something in common. Yes. You know. I always felt I was uh, I always liked hanging out with lesbians because we could all talk about the same thing, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I used to have a thing. I used to have a thing for women who could be mistaken as lesbians. I had this one girlfriend uh, who you knew. I won't, I won't say her on the air now. Who kind of looked, kind of looked, really looked dykish, 
Yeah, yeah. But she wasn't. You know, I never knew one moment that she ever had a uh, lesbian trait in her. And yet she had that look. You know, uh, and I like that look. <laughs> you know, that kind of sporty, short hair, you know. Love, love the short hair. Love the short hair. Love short hair on short women. That that would give me a boner every time. <laughs> And uh, then I wound up going out with this woman, Kathleen, who calls the show now. And Kathleen, I don't know how this happened to me. I just don't know how this happened to me. 6'1", blonde. Against every type I ever found sexy. Okay? And I never could figure it out. Never could figure it out. Everybody would go, Alex, you're going out with this tall blonde. What, what happened to you? I said, I don't know. I must have gotten shorter. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but I, uh, I always liked, uh, I always liked women who were a little on the, on the, on the, shall, shall we say lesbian side or look like it. I didn't want to go out with lesbians. I wasn't one of those guys who went, well, I can change them. No, I, I never entertained that thought, but I did entertain the thought that, uh, you know, these women that I, that I liked all had kind of like a, a more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mannish quality? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to use that term because then it seems like I'm in the closet and I'm really looking for a guy. And that wasn't <laughs> the, that wasn't the case either. You know, I mean, I I, try, I tried a guy once and it wasn't much fun. You know, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Uh, although, uh, what was it they did on Seinfeld about? Well, you know, uh, they have the same equipment as you do. And yeah. so, therefore, they know what to do. They understand with it. it better. <laughs> they understand it better. Yeah, I. Uh, well, what it was was I was at an orgy, and somebody started blowing me, <laughs> and it was really good, really good. And I looked down, and it was a guy. Oh my god! And I said to myself, "Well." Go for, go along for the ride. You know, you never you never had this experience before, mm -hmm. and he I let him keep blowing me for a while, and it was it was uh, I have to say he was giving women a good run for their money because he oh he God. had the equipment, so he knew he what knew. to do with it. <laughs> and then I said, uh, uh, then I kind of pulled away and stuff because it wasn't uh, this as I as the, as I've said uh, so many times on the air about it, uh, the stubble got to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, it, I could pretend like it was a woman until I felt a beard it's scratching so, oh against my, my leg, you know. That's a, that's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had a gay experience? No, no. Okay, have you ever had a sexual experience? I <laughs> have. The limit is with women. <laughs> and those have been very few and far between. I've been in quite a drought lately, so... Well. You know, you get to an age where it's like women don't—they don't reject you. They don't even see you. You're oh no, you become radar. Oh, I'm invisible. I'm invisible yeah, now. We're invisible. You know, I can leer at young women, and they don't even notice that I'm leering. Yeah, I know. You know, that's the great advantage. But you—you've become invisible. You just disappeared into the ether with them. Yeah, I think if you hit sixty, you're in the ether. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, although you know, it's still there are women that go for older guys, but sixty is is about the limit for girls who want older guys. You know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, women who want older guys are usually like women in their twenties who want a guy who's forty, forty-five. You know. Yeah. Who was uh, was it? Dennis McQuaid, who's sixty-three. I think he's got a maybe married or she's twenty-five. Dennis McQuaid. Yeah, who's Dennis that? Quaid. Dennis Quaid. Quaid. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, you know, the girlfriend that I had for so many years that you knew was twenty-five years my junior, something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it had nothing to do with her being young. You know, I didn't really. That never meant anything to me. You know, it, it, it was that I enjoyed the person. You know. And and uh, and love them and so on and so forth and that was and you can't stop that from happening, but um, 
Now I've got a woman who's closer to my age. She's five, what, five years younger, four years younger, you know. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm now going out with an older woman, technically. But, you know, you say you go, went th- you've been through a drought for, what, 10, ten years, do you say? <laughs> no, about three. Three, three years. Okay, three-year drought. A- at your age, if I had a drought that long, I'd want to shoot myself. Now, well. I go, well, it's not really a drought. It's called marriage. You know, so... Uh, <laughs> Somebody, well, somebody, did you, did you ever go out with a woman that was significantly older than you? Uh, significantly older than me? Uh, but, 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 but I'm trying to think. No, no. Um, have I ever gone out with a woman that was older than me? That, that I don't think so. Yeah, I don't recall you being with an older woman. No, I, I don't recall being with. A, and it's not. It wasn't so much that I had a prejudice against older wo- women. If an older woman came on to me, we, I would have probably taken her up on it, you know, because I would fuck anything in those days. <laughs> uh, but no, I would take her up on it, and, and so that, that, was, that, was, that was fine with me. Um, uh, but I, I age that way, had no, I had no problem with it. It's just I was never given the opportunity of an older woman coming on to me. I guess I wasn't just older woman bait as it were. No cougars uh, in your life. No cougars in my life, yeah. No, I wish I had, actually it would have been nice to have a cougar, actually, especially when I was younger, because uh, I could have learned a lot, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, it, I'm just trying to think, was there ever an older woman? And I can't think that there I, that there was, you know. I mean, an older woman, I'm going, my wife is an older woman. Uh, <laughs> not older than me, though. But anyway, so they, they, you know, yeah, um, you know, I, I got this, I got this thing the other day from um, uh, uh, one of our listeners on the show, okay, and I'll probably talk about this tonight on the show uh, when we go into it because he'll probably call. But he was taking a, a drug called uh, clonopin. Have you ever heard of clonopin? I've heard of it, but I'm not sure what it does. And he said that he was trying to get off of it, and they've had to wean him off of it, and it's going to take a couple of years to wean him off of it. That's how bad the drug is. Two years? Something like that. And I said, uh, what happens when you withdraw? And he says, I haven't got time to tell you. So he sent me a list of all the things that could happen to him during withdrawal. And it starts out with akathasia. What is what the fuck is akathasia? Agitation and anxiety, blurred vision, chest pains, depersonalization, depression, dilated pupils, dizziness, dry mouth, dysphoria, uh, elevation of blood pressure, fatigue and weakness, gastrointestinal disturbance. Uh, I guess that would be farting too. Uh, hearing disturbance, headache, hot and cold spells, hypersomia. Uh, hypertension, hyper, hypogogic hallucinations, hypochondriacs. I guess I guess you you become a hypochondriac out of it. Increased sensitivity to touch, increased urinary frequency, insomnia, impaired memory and concentration, loss of appetite. This is all from withdrawal on this drug. <laughs> loss of appetite and weight loss. Mid to moderate aphasia, mood swings, muscular spasms and cramps, nightmares, obsessive compulsive disorder, paresthesia, paranoia, perspiration, photophobia, postural hypotension, REM sleep rebound, restless leg syndrome, stiffness, taste and smell disturbances, tachycardia, tendonitis, tremor, and visual disturbances. <laughs> And this was approved by the FDA. Hold on a second. Rapid discontinuation may result in more serious syndrome, catatonia, confusion, convulsions, coma, delirium tremens, hypothermia, mania, neuroleptic malignant syndrome-like event. Uh, That's rare, by the way. They say the thing saying rare. Organic brain syndrome, post-traumatic stress disorder, psychosis, suicidal ideation, or suicide, and violence and aggression. Wow. Now, those are all the side effects of trying to quit clonopin. 
And I wrote him back a simple reply. It said, gee, the same symptoms as marriage. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> marriage should come with a little warning label like medicine. <laughs> yes. It may, may it may in, well, I may induce vomiting. Um, thoughts of suicide. Thoughts of suicide, you know. Certainly you give up on everything. Well, but, that's that's the most side effects I've ever heard of on anything. What? Oh, that? that? The clonitin, yeah. Clonitin. Jesus. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, that's amazing. Now, granted, in the list of, uh, of contradictions, they list almost everything that could possibly happen to you. I mean, even if it's so rare that it's ridiculous, you know. Uh, but they don't want to get sued, so they throw in everything but the kitchen sink when they list uh, the, uh, the, you know. But that's from withdrawal. That's not from the taking the pill itself. Yeah, I wish I remembered what it was for. Well, for instance, if I go online right now and I put in pregabalin, okay, which is the pill that I'm taking for my restless leg syndrome, pregab. Lynn, pre-gabalin, and then I go pre-gabalin side effects. Okay, uh, let's see here. What are the side effects of taking pre-gabalin? Well, here are. Let me see here. Here are the side effects: dizziness, drowsiness. I have that. Unsteadiness. I have that. Memory loss. I think I have that. Yeah. Uh, lack of coordination. I have that. Difficulty speaking. Eh. Not really. Do I? Do I seem like I have a difficulty no, speaking to you? No. Okay. Viral infections. No. Tremors. Double vision. A little bit. Fever. Unusual eye movements and jerky movements. Now those were all those. If not as bad as clonopin, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but still, with those side effects, you have to. And I, I do feel some of them. You have to say, wow. You know, I mean, it's, uh, um, you know, it, it, now you see there, I forgot. No, uh, it, 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 you know, with those side effects, why would you give that pill to anybody? And then I say to myself, they give old people any pill that they can give them. They don't care yeah. what the side effects, oh, go ahead, here's heroin. <laughs> you know, go take it, you old man. You know, it'll make you feel better, right? You don't wor don't worry about it killing you. Your life expectancy isn't that long anyway. That's how they look at it. I mean, with the with the with the prostate cancer thing, they say, well, you know, you really shouldn't get PSA tests to guys after seventy years of age because uh, if they live an average lifespan, uh, they'll die of something else. Oh well, that's yeah, a, that's a that's a really happy answer to give me. I'm going to die of something. Don't worry about the prostate cancer. You're going to die of something else. Our, our total lack of respect for old people in this country is unbelievable. Well, they they don't understand that there's a chance. Okay, let's say uh, if, uh, it's a slow growing cancer, the prostate cancer, and it will never come to anything before I die of something else. But let's say I don't die of something else. Well, isn't the prostate cancer then going to keep getting worse and worse and worse? Yeah. You know, it, it, I don't know what to think about any of this, you know. But it's very depressing. <laughs> it's very depressing. So. Well, I, I want to find out what clonopin's for. Clonopin? Yeah. 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 Uh, clonopin. Um, well, here, let me let me look it up here. Uh, yeah. uh, I guess it's spelled clon, clon o pin. Let's see if that's how clonopin. Oh, it's with a K. It's with a K. Ah. Ah. Okay. I, I'm, I don't trust any drug. Oh, uh, and it's uh, got another name. It's clonazepam. Okay. It's for... It's for perforation. It's for indications. It's useful loaner adjunct treatment of Lennox Gastaut syndrome, akinetic, and myelocolonic seizures. 
and patients absent. I don't know. It doesn't say really anything that I understand. Oh, it's <laughs> indicated for the treatment, here we go, of panic disorder. Panic, okay. With or without agoraphobia. As yeah. Okay, so that's that's I guess that's what it's for, it's for panic disorder. But so the, I, mean, uh, I mean, but the side effects so the side effects are worse than what it's treating. Well, that it, those weren't side effects. That was the effects of withdrawal. Okay. The side effects withdrawal are dizziness, okay. confusion, increased saliva, muscle aches, frequent urination, blurred vision, loss of interest in sex, fatigue. Hmm. Well, maybe that's how they keep you from ever getting off the pill. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I guess. Oh, man, oh, man. You know, I mean, they, uh, are you taking any medicine at all? Do you have any? Is your do uh, doctor prescribed anything to you? No, I'm supposed to be on a, uh, they highly suggest I take a cholesterol drug, but I refuse. Why? I don't like taking pills. Well, they say the cholesterol pill is is a, is a Historic, a, stat, a statin, yes, a, a statin. statin. But it's it it is a it is one of the best things ever invented. Because, That's what Carvey keeps telling me. Huh? Yeah. Dana Carvey keeps telling me that. Yeah, uh, and um, it is uh, because we generally, as we age, we have a tendency to have high cholesterol, no matter what we eat. Okay, people, try, yeah. you know, and you work out and so on. So you've got a lot, you probably got good cholesterol really good LDL, but the bad cholesterol, you're going to have a hard time keeping that away. And there's this pill that lowers it, period. Uh, oh, it'll def I've tried it. It definitely it cuts it in half for me. Isn't yeah, well, I uh, um, uh, there was a doctor that said to me once, he said, if I had another kid today, I would start him at 15 on a statin. He said it's Jesus. just a wonder drug. It will just keep the cholesterol away. You know, so that's the only drug. Uh, but my my, I got one pill that I took, and it was a cholesterol pill. And then I needed another pill for the thyroid. And then I need another pill for this, another pill for that. I'm now taking seven pills a month, a day. I'd, yeah, and that's, uh, I think, under the average. Is that under the average? People, people over 65, I think, in this country take at least 12 pills a day. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I could cut out a couple of them, you know, uh, without much, much pain, okay, or change in my men medical profile. But see what we're talking about again, folks. This is this is once again. It's Larry and Alex getting <laughs> depressed. <laughs> Talking about pills. And the disturbing thing, 80% of our pharmaceuticals are made in China now, so that gives you a real... I think the biggest bomb that hit me was their, our close friend, a comedian. I've mentioned his name on this show because the, he, he's on this show regularly, and I wanted to explain his non-appearance. Well, it's Will Durst, okay. Um, had a stroke. You know, and, and, and that really got to me because I talk to this guy every three weeks. You know, I see him on Skype, you know, and, and, I, and I, I've come to really love the guy. And, uh, uh, you know, to see that happen to him and, I, you know, that kind of thing, I don't know if I would want that because you're still alive but you're debilitated, you know? Yeah, you can uh, overcome it with a rehab. Um, well, you, you, it, I have a friend named Jeff. He calls the show every night, and he had a stroke many years ago, about 20 years ago. And to this day, he can't read. Really? Yeah. Wow. He can't read, and he still has trouble talking a little bit, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, he had to really work at it. There was a lot of therapy there. So if you're a comedian and timing's important to you, Losing your speech, for instance, can be a real problem. That would be a bad one, yeah. You know, and and supposedly he has some speech problems. Now they may be over, he may be able to overcome them, 
but he also has his his left side is um, is numb or whatever, gone or not working. So with all these things, you know, I know people say, don't worry, he can go to a chiropractor, he can fix that. A chiropractor. Yeah. I'm going to a chiropractor now. For the for the numbness in the yeah, feet. Yeah, you mentioned that last yeah, time. Yeah, and I, it's marginally helping, you know. So I'm going to go back one more time and see if it gets even better. Either that, or it could be the pills I'm taking. So I don't know Good which news. it yeah. is. You know. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. I just looked at the clock, and we were. You, you, it's time for me to tell you to shut up. We should. Well, we're literally running out of time. So. so. Yeah. 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 Hey, listen, talk to you next week. Will do. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Alex. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Oh, boy, I get off to a shitty start tonight. God, my mind is, I can't do this anymore. I think it's time for me to... Pack it all in. Yeah? Okay. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay? Uh, how are you this evening? Uh, uh, well, let me uh, turn on the uh, Skype lines here. Oh, boy. If we don't get a lot of calls tonight, I think I'm going to just pack it in early because I'm, I'm, I'm just out of it. Plus, tomorrow, my doctor is supposed to call me with the results of my PSA test. So I'm all, ups you know me, I'm all upset about that when I really shouldn't be. It'll, it'll be what it will be, okay? Anyway, so uh, 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 the lines are now open, and uh, let's see if anybody wants to call the program. Well, already. Oh, hey, Vernon Nunn is calling, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Vernon... Let me see here. I got to find you a spot on the uh, on the thing here. We'll make you the first guy up, and so you get the top slot. And there we go. And uh, there we go. Hello, Vernon. How you doing? I'm great. Yeah. Where are you? You're still on vacation. Mm-hmm. And you're you're where again? In the. Uh, Virginia Mountains. Virginia Mountains. The Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia? Mm, Shenandoah. Shenandoah. Okay. I don't know any of that. All I know is that there was a song called Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia on the trail of the Lonesome Pine, so I was simply quoting that. And how's the vacation going? Nice? Mm, it's almost over. How long? Head back on Saturday. How long did you spend there? Two weeks. Huh? Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Cool. I, uh, you know, this, that's a, that's great. I need a vacation. I need it desperately. So if I uh, if I get a decent uh, uh, thing tomorrow with my uh, PSA test, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go somewhere. I gotta get out of here. I'm just you know I'm fried. Totally fried. Probably a good idea. Just by the whole experience, you know. Um, doctors, most doctors don't terrorize me, but urologists have in the past. This guy's okay, but urologists have really terrorized me over the years. And um, and it's not because I, I don't like them playing with my pee, pee but they just all seem to have a different way of, you know, uh, and I'll tell you, I, uh, uh, I I asked my my doctor, my what do you call it, my uh, internist. I said I I'm, I gotta find myself a decent urologist. He said, "Good luck." <laughs> His attitude was, urology wasn't a very well respected craft. Our uh, general practitioner that my wife and I see. Yeah. Going on 30 years. Yeah. Same guy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We love him. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I've got a guy who, how can I put it? He's a great traffic cop. In other words, something's wrong. I know the doctor for that, you know, and then he sends you to the right guy. 
But a couple of times he sent me to the wrong guy. Like the last urologist he sent me to was really bad. Then he sent me to this one who's really good. Okay. But, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Shecky goes to a, a doctor called uh, Lou Aroni, who was David Letterman's doctor. And mm -hmm. Aroni is one of the great traffic cops. He will send you the best possible doctor for whatever condition you have. Okay. <laughs> But it's not that he can cure it. You know, that's not what he does, you know. But he's a traffic cop. And uh, that's, that's what great, uh, you know, what great uh, 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 internists are. So, yeah. And One then, thing I've heard about our, our medical practices in this country, the medical schools train our doctors to treat symptoms. They don't train them. To fix your problem. Oh, really? That's what I've heard. Well, I I uh, happen to, you know, um, I don't know. My doctor, my internist, is also a cardiologist. So th there, that's a good thing because I when I go to get my yearly checkup, he also plays cardiologist and checks my heart and makes sure it's okay and everything like that. You know, um, but uh, so my heart's in great shape. Uh, I've got a stenosis, a mild stenosis, but that at my age, that's you know, yeah, it's probably normal. Oh, it's yeah, it is normal. Uh, he uh, he said, don't even worry about it. He said he said to me, he said at the rate the stenosis is growing, because he checks it about every two years. He said if you live to be another fifty years, it may cause a problem. <laughs> so oh, you know that was his. Thing. Oh, look who's here this evening. Oh, this is nice. What a pleasant surprise, ladies and gentlemen. The addition to our citizen panel of, uh, well, wait a minute, I've got to get out of this here so that I can, yeah, there's his picture now. See, if I go ahead of time before the picture comes up, it doesn't show up on my list. Uh, uh, he, well, here comes, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, got, I need my glasses on. Why am I so vain? Uh, Tom Yamaguchi, there we go. Okay, all right. Hi. And boom, there he is. There's Tom. Hi, Tom. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. So, so uh, 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 Vernon's on vacation. Nice. Yeah. And uh, and and uh, he is, uh, he. I, I've got to take a vacation. I've, I've, it's been so long since I've taken a vacation. And I just got to say to you guys, Get along with me, Aphrodite, for it without me for a couple of weeks. You know, I am such a mess today. I don't know why. I'm worried about this test tomorrow, and uh, I don't know. This pill that I take for the neuropathy is just, you know, it's really it's causing me to p stumble into walls. Yes, Tom. Oh, uh, by the way, I don't know if Larry Brown's. Still listening, <laughs> no, but he, no, uh, yeah, he, I'm also on a statin drug, and I, I, I would say yes, definitely take it. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Um, people, people have had heart problems over the years, but when statins came along, it was like the miracle drug. It was the penicillin of the heart. You know, uh, I had doctors who told me that uh, it is so good that. Uh, if they had a kid today, they would put him on statins at 15. Right. That yeah. is just good <clears throat> practice. Uh, yeah. now they do have their downside, but, you know, the upside is so positive that you can't do anything I about it. I haven't experienced any downside. My, my cholesterol was sort of borderline for a long time. Mm -hmm. I sort of, like, resisted, and then I just realized that it's silly to resist. Uh, you know, I, I have a fairly good diet. It's mostly, you know, I don't eat much meat. Mm -hmm. Try to cut down on fat, you know, keep down on fat as much as possible. But it was still, as you said, when people get older, uh, that bad cholesterol will, will come up. And so uh, now, now it's, it's, it's great. Well, I had lard flowing through my veins. And uh, <laughs> uh, you, you could actually butter toast with my blood, okay? You know. Uh, and, um, they, you know, my cholesterol was high. And so he gave me a statin, Boop. went right down. 
Then all of a sudden, I went to get my yearly one time. Went to get my yearly. And he took my blood, and he wrote me, and he said, your cholesterol is crazy. It just went sky high. And he said, I don't know how it's doing that. You're on, we've got you on a statin. And then I suddenly realized that that month, I had, I, I had forgotten to, when I made out my little pill box full of stuff, to throw in the statin. So for one oh. month, I didn't take the Oops. statin, and boom, right up, you know. So, I mean, these things are, these are, these are miracle drugs, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, but it's interesting that we can cure, we can take care of things like that, and we do a great job of it. And then other stuff, we just don't seem to even do anything about or have an ability at it. I mean, this whole thing, I mean, Vernon went through it with prostate cancer, uh, with the whole PSA test and all that, that is such an inexact voodoo science, you know, uh, that uh, I, I, I suppose with somebody like Vernon, who was how old when you had your prostate problem? 62. Yeah. If you get around 62, that can cause a real problem. And so if you're suddenly you, your PSA goes up, how high was it? Do you remember? 9.2. 9.2. Uh, that's still kind of within a... Well, then they did a, a probably a biopsy and found that you had it, right? And did they find a tumor there, too, or whatever? No, one out of 12. One cancerous. Out, oh, really? Really? Yep. Oh, well, so you, you maybe were not... Did not have an aggressive form, you know? Probably not. Yeah, so that's... A, that's a, but when you're 62, they're very careful about it, you know. When you're my age, they go, you know, we're going to wait and watch, you know, and, and see what uh, what the story is. It's what's called watchful waiting. Uh, and uh, so I, you know, what the hell? Go with the watchful waiting. I'll I'll buy that one. Uh, but anyway, uh, hello to uh, uh, Mr. Zeller. How are you, Jeff? How are you? Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're talking medicine again, <laughs> you know. I heard a little bit of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but did, when, when you're you in, hear? Yeah. When you get a raise in your PSA and, uh, if, you know, they find anything in, at that age, they're very careful about it. At my age, they go, you're probably going to die of something mm -hmm. else, which is really... Wonderful news to know, you know, <laughs> it, you're probably going to die of something else before the cancer will get you. And I'm going, that's a, that, that, that makes me really feel good. You know, gosh, I won't good, die of cancer. Good medicine, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, Tom. Yeah, I was just going to ask uh, Jeff if he heard the uh, conversation with uh, about him with Larry Bowles Brown. Yes, the, the last uh, ten minutes of it or so. Yeah. 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 Uh, you got your stroke. Yeah, we were talking about your stroke. Oh yeah. Yeah. We had but, a discussion about it. By the way, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm I'm trying to figure this out. You know, like uh, comedians, you, you something happens to them, uh, you you joke with them about it, right? You know. Because that's the that's the we we know that that's the chicken soup for the soul is comedy, you know. Uh, so, I saw something the other day, and I'm wondering if I should send it to Will. And it's a book called are you re "Ready for This: Stroke for Dummies." Why not? <laughs> I mean, would you have minded it if when you had your stroke, if I had no, sent no, you I... a copy of "Stroke for Dummies"? Somebody would have to read it to me. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, it it's um, I and I looked at a little bit of it because they let you see it on you know Amazon, yeah. and it really looks pretty helpful. Actually, it tells you what to expect and don't get depressed and dip a dum and you know, uh, you, you know you can overcome this and it's a it's a pep talk is what it is. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I had it or I saw it or somebody gave, gave it to me or uh, let me borrow it for a while. I remember seeing it. Oh, what? So. 
the stroke for dummies stroke for dummies yeah 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 i think there's a there's a four dummies book for everything that's <laughs> now i'd like to know what was the first four dummies book Oh, they were all computer. It must have been computer. It must have been a computer. Oh, related. all about Windows because because Microsoft never released any any readable manuals. Yeah, no, not at <laughs> all. And and here here was the thing that Apple said: we don't need a manual. Right. You remember that? Or if they sure. said, gave you something, it was like a pamphlet. Okay. They're still doing that. Yeah, and I got I got news for them. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm good at computers. Okay, so I can kind of work my way around it. But if you get somebody like uh, Aunt Maud and you throw her a computer at her, you throw an apple at her, I'm sorry, Aunt Maud's going to have a problem with it, no matter what. She's going to have a problem with an iPhone. Well, you have to have a grandson sure how to use it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What were you going to say, uh, Jeff? I lost uh, my cell phone the other day. I had not lost it. It did. It crashed. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So I bought a new one. Well, guess what? Everything is quite different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Is it, is it another <laughs> iPhone? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's the new one. Well, it's the XS. It's XS, okay. Right. Uh, as compared to I had a six. The XS is, I think, their cheapest one, which has yeah. less of everything, but you would think that they would call have the XS have more of everything because it's the XS, yeah. you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. I just it thought. seems to have everything except for maybe all of these uh, new uh, uh, camera stuff. Yeah, I buy it for the camera stuff. I, I, when I'm buying an iPhone now, I'm buying a camera. I'm not buying a phone. The mm. phone is just something it does as a matter of fact. In fact, when they're pushing it on those, uh, those things that they do, those uh, you know tech meetings and whatever, and they show the new Apple uh, iPhone, what did they talk about for 20 minutes? The, the camera. They didn't even talk about how good the music plays on it or uh, how if you're in a thunderstorm, it picks up good uh, phone service. You know, none of that it had nothing to do with it being a phone. It had to do with it being a camera. So, you know. Well, it's a, it's a challenge to figure out how to use it again. Really? Why? Oh, yeah. Why? It's the same as the old one. No, it's quite different. In what way? Uh, everything that you put on now, you have to s take your your thumb or your finger and put this one and s and put it in this direction and this one in another direction to mm -hmm. change something. So you're losing your you're using your fingers. Mm. Yeah, I, I, to kind of well, make I, decisions. Well, it is it it is slightly different. I don't know which which ones you have. You have like the five or something like that. You know, like I had a six. Six, six yeah. Well, I mean, what they did with this phone is they just simply, uh, you know, they everything is uh, there's no there's no no uh, button any longer. Right. You remember how you used to have buttons? Uh, yeah. Who is this? This is. Uh, let me see here. Uh, who who is this? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Hi, Eddie. Hi, hi Eddie. How are you? Let me uh, let, let me just uh, let me fi find a little spot for you here in our. Uh, in our thing here, let me see here. Uh, 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 Jordan, there we go. Okay, all right, and let me then do this, and then let me do that, and there we go. Hi, Ed. How are you? Great. Long time no see. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while, but glad you called tonight. Nice to have yeah. you here. Um, uh, but what I was saying about the phone. Is that it doesn't have it where where the old one had a button, you yeah. don't have that anymore. So you have to just learn to you know turn the thing on to begin with. Do you get have face recognition on yours? No, on the XS does it have a, a face recognition? Like when you turn it on, does it just look? You look at it and it it lets you in. Mine does. Well, all you got to do is yeah. Kind of do it and it goes on. Do you, do you, oh, you, but you do you have to look at and it? You have to 
at this point, I slide it and put the code. Let me see. Right. Hold the phone up to the camera here a yeah. second. Let me see it a second. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Uh, no, I don't. Is that? I'm trying to figure out if that has, uh, if that has, uh, I, if that has. Uh, no, I don't think it does. I, I don't think it has face recognition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the face recognition helps a lot. You know. Um, and um, I think that's something you can turn on. And off. What's that? Yeah. Face recognition. Oh, you, you can turn it on or turn it off. You can turn the face recognition um, off on these. And what does it replace mm -hmm. it with? Passcode. Well, like Jeff has a passcode on. Oh, a passcode. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I just like looking at it and having it say I recognize you. And you know something? It, it, I, here's how stupid I am. Okay. I'm going, you know, this thing even works in the dark. It recognizes my face in the dark. And then I mm. suddenly realized it's got a light on my face, okay? So yeah. it, can, it can see my face in the dark, of course, you know. Yeah. So. It'll, it'll mute your alarm in the morning, too, and your alarm goes off and you look at it. Yeah. It turns it down. Well, if, if, if your phone is ringing... I, I, this happened when I yeah. first got it, and I went, what's wrong with my goddamn phone? But when you look at it, it mutes the, the ring quite a bit, almost yeah. down to nothing. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, you know, I, I kind of like this phone. I think it's the, the X is your a good model, you know. Yeah. I, th I think it does have uh, recognition. Of course. And I just have to. Yeah. Of course, my friend, uh, my friend Bubbles still has a, has a flip phone. You know, uh, I, I'm surprised it even works, you know, but what the hell, you know, I mean, he, he doesn't have any need for this. I offered him one of my, one of my phones, one of my old ones. When I got rid of my old, you know, when I got my new one, I had another one sitting around here and I said, okay, you can have it. All I want you to do is go out and find out about getting service. Okay. <laughs> and he never did that, you know. So I wasn't about ready to send him the phone and having it sit around on his, you know, coffee table doing nothing, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, anyway, but I could have done Skype calls with him that way, though. Mm -hmm. And I suppose if I were wealthy, I would uh, I would send him the phone and then pay his phone bill for him, you know. <laughs> but anyway. So, um, uh, Eddie, how's everything's going with you? What's what, let's see here. You have a whole bunch of mach are you in a you in your garage? Oh no, what I'm in a, oh, a wow. machine shop. A machine oh, wow. shop at, at work. Uh huh. Break time, so I just wanted to check in. Yeah, and you do what exactly? I forgot again. You know, because I'm getting um, old and I forget stuff. Uh, well, I'm a millwright, so I, I work on machinery. Uh -huh. and, Oil, I'm in an oil refinery right now. Wow. So do you always you always work in the same place, or do you go to different places? Different places, but I've been here since since April. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, right. yeah. I've, I go all over. I've known a lot of people do a lot of things. I've never met anybody that does what you do. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I got a bumper sticker that says, uh, what the hell is a millwright? So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty common. Nobody knows what we do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you're, well, I'm looking at all the machines and I'm very familiar with them all. Really? Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Wait a minute. Show them, show them all those machines there. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Tell us, uh, uh, show us. Uh, well, just right hold, there, hold. he just went by a lane. A lane. Yeah. Have yeah. Okay. Another lathe. Yeah. Yeah. And then, must have a milling machine here somewhere. Down yeah. there is a big uh, mill, big mill. But I don't. I usually don't work. I don't work do any machinist work. But I I just put the compressors together and uh, and service them. This is what I'm basically. I'm on night, so I'm cleaning up all day shift. Will take all the parts. Take everything yeah. apart and then I clean them up and inspect them. Oh wow! So and uh, here's where, these are the these are the pistons on the you know like a car's piston. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, oh, hold on a second, let me show people there so they can see it. Bigger. 
Yeah, I've got I've got you a full screen now, so people can see this stuff. Mm -hmm. so, wow. That, uh, so how do you know about this, Jeff? Well, for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. My dad was a machinist. Mm -hmm. And also he ran a couple of the factories at one time or another. Mm -hmm. um, in high school, I was uh, I went to a school in uh, New York, which was an engineering school, and and that was uh, part of the course. Wow. How to use all the machines. And, yeah. And also fix them. Yeah. And uh, so you see, I mean, Eddie, uh, so Eddie, are you impressed by Jeff's knowledge of this stuff, that he could identify the machines? Yeah, he, he did good. Yeah. I did all right. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> It's amazing. Anyway. The, it's amazing the wealth of knowledge that our uh, our audience has. Yeah, you know. Uh, but uh, anyway, let me go back to uh, let me see all the people here. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, let's see here. What's happening in the news? Anything, or is it the same old fucking goddamn shit? Kentucky, Virginia. That's well, right. Well, but well, we with that we we had that one last night. You know, we knew that was that last night. Um, yeah, but do we? Are, should we be happy about this? Is it any no. sign of anything? <laughs> what, what are you going to say? Have, what I find strange. Top. I find strange about the Kentucky election. Really? It said twelve thousand more people out of one point four million total vote cast. Twelve thousand more people voted for attorney general. Than voted for governor. <laughs> oh God! Go figure. It happened last election too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, can you opt out of that? I guess you can, huh? I mean, yeah. you can just not vote for that part of the slate in, sure. in that state. Yeah. If you, yeah, you can just opt out and not voting for governor. Period. Do they have a opt out part on the ticket where you just oh, don't vote for anybody in Kentucky? In Kentucky, they have each office listed in who's who's on the ballot for that office. Yeah. So if you don't check anybody for governor, then you don't vote for governor. Oh, okay. You can still vote yeah. for everybody else down yeah. the ticket. Tom? Yeah, I was going to say um, that, that, well, there was a libertarian running, too. So uh, so that, that person got 2% of the vote. But uh, yeah. it's interesting. One other thing that happened in your city, New York, you voted for... Uh, Ranked choice voting. Then what? Hey, I gotta go. Oh, Ranked you got you gotta go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Eddie. I'll, thanks I'll for talk to you later. Thanks for calling. We appreciate it. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 Okay. And there goes Eddie. So we need somebody to replace his spot there. So somebody give us a call. Uh, what oh, were you gonna buffer. say? I wanted to talk more with Eddie. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, go on, Tom, with what you were saying. Yeah, I said uh, your city, New York, just joined Berkeley, Oakland, Fremont, San Francisco, and the state of Maine, uh, and a bunch of other places uh, that now have right choice voting. What, what, what choice voting? <laughs> choice voting. Say that first word again. Somebody sneezed. <laughs> Rank. R-A-N-K. Oh, ranked choice voting. So I take it you didn't vote yesterday. No, I didn't. What, we get to vote for number one, two, and three or something? It's actually, you got five choices. Really? Yeah. You That's got, too you much. That's choices. too much fucking work. I just want to go in and vote for one person. And you can. You can go in and vote for one person, or you can vote for no people, like like they did in, in Kentucky with uh, with the governor. Yeah, well, we had uh, what we had here in New York for the first time, in New York City was uh, early voting. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but it was it was not like early voting in a lot of other states where it's like a month beforehand or whatever. It was like a week beforehand, and you could go in, and vote, at, you know, on any one of those those uh, those days. And so uh, well, my wife, my wife read something that Kentucky did not have early voting, but that's BS because she and I both voted early before we came on vacation. Oh, really? Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, you're you're in Kentucky, are you, Vernon? You, that's that's where I live. Yeah, that's I'm where you Virginia. live. Yeah. 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 So uh, so how do you feel about uh, Kentucky? What is all that noise we're getting? Uh, 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 how do you uh, how do you look at Kentucky at the situation in Kentucky uh, that happened yesterday? And how do you do you think it's a precursor to the way Kentucky might vote in the general election? No, but what I think it's showing is that the suburban voters are getting sick and tired of Trump mm -hmm. because there are three counties up near Cincinnati. They are considered suburban counties of Cincinnati, Ohio, but they're across the river in yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. Boone, Kenton, and Crawford, uh, Campbell counties. Mm -hmm. And all four, all three of those counties went for Donald Trump in 2016 by like 30 points. But in this gubernatorial election, Kenton and Campbell counties turned blue. Wow. That's uh, And Boone County yeah. was red, but it was by a very small margin. Wow. Yes, uh, Tom. Let me give you another example in a different state, Pennsylvania. Uh, and I sort of am familiar with this because uh, my daughter lived with my adoptive mother in this area, this area, suburban Philadelphia called Delaware County. Mm -hmm. And the Democrats just took over last night, which was really surprising because this is such a Republican county. It hasn't, it hasn't gone Democrat since the, the 19th century. And, uh, and so... It's another example of, as Verna was saying, suburban voters are getting really tired of Trump. They're, and they're, in, in Pennsylvania, they're getting tired of Republicans in general. So. Yeah. But one poll that I saw had, uh, had Matt Bevin, the current governor, ahead by five points. On Monday, Donald Trump came to a rally in Lexington, Kentucky, for Matt Bevin, mm -hmm. and he lost. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the one in which he said, uh, it, it, the trouble is... You're voting for me. Don't, don't, vote, don't vote against me. <laughs> yes, he made it personal. Well, no, but he, yeah. makes, he makes all that stuff personal. He doesn't go in and talk about Bevan and all that, how good Bevan's been for the state or whatever. It's all about, <laughs> hey, don't, vote for Bevan. Don't make me look bad. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And he said something to that effect, actually, that they, you know, it's, it's going to make me look like I'm going to be a loser and they all want me to look like a loser. So you better go out and, you know, don't make <laughs> me look bad. You know, yes, Jeff. I heard this morning MSNBC, mm -hmm. the radio show, the uh, on TV. Yeah. And uh, what's the guy's name? Joe, who does that show? Joe Scarborough. Scarborough. Yeah. And Scarborough yeah. gets on the phone and uh, and he says, I think Trump always listens at this time of the morning. So he's probably l listening to me right now. And I want to tell you that until it was about two weeks ago, the Democrats were behind. And when you came out, to Virginia, I think it was, and Trump came out there and made a presentation. His numbers went just the opposite that they were supposed to go. And he goes, you are screwing it up. Do you think there are going to be people now who are going to say, don't show up to help me? Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, um, uh, it, 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 it seems like, uh, like he could be a detriment, which is fine. You know, that's terrific. Uh, that'd be wonderful. You know, if he's a, if he's a detriment, so be it. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, something else interesting, Matt Bevan has not conceded the race. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, why he's is... Gonna well, want, he's going to want a recount, supposedly. Well, supposedly, it's not that... It, it, there's like about a 5,000 vote difference... Mm -hmm. And that's not the kind of difference that you can overcome in a recount, you know? As a matter of fact, he, when he ran for governor, there was a primary race before he ran in the general when he won the governorship the first time. 
and there was somebody challenging him in the primary. And Bevin won by 87 votes. Oh, and they, asked, and they asked for a, a re-canvas. Okay, a re-canvas is not the same as a recount. But mm -hmm. they did a re-canvas, and the totals came out exactly the same. What's a re-canvas? Re-canvas is where the Secretary of State requests all the numbers from the county clerks in the state. Okay. And they look at the numbers and make sure that the numbers that got reported to the Secretary of State yeah. do, in fact, jive with what they send in the second time. And if mm -hmm. they do, then they say, yeah, that's, yeah. They, they certify the election. But within 10 days after the election, the losing party can request a recount. But whoever requests a recount has to pay for it. Oh, okay. And in that case, the paper ballots are all sent to a judge, and the judge has people who actually go through all the paper ballots and make sure that that was done correctly. That's got to be a pretty— It takes time. It's an expensive proposition, too, right? Yeah. Right. But, right, and the person who requests the recount has to pay for it. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Good. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> Oh, boy. Hey, listen, folks, we could use a few more callers here. God, it's been slow this week. I don't know. Have, 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 has this whole thing finally started boring you folks? You know? Uh, I mean, uh, all of a sudden, you know, it's been last night was slow and tonight's slow. I think last night we got up to six people. I think we did at some point. Uh, but I'm I'm really tired, so if we don't get a few more people here before, say, 1130, I'm going to make it a shorter-than-usual show. Uh, not because I don't like you guys, it's just that I don't have the strength to keep going. Um, so, um, Tom, how are you seeing this whole election coming up? Okay. <laughs> do you, I mean, do you think... I think I tried to say this the other night when my, my microphone kicked out. Yeah. Um, but... I I feel good about the election. Mm. I really do. I think I think that uh, one thing we haven't even gotten to the primaries, and so that's going to tell a lot right you know right then you know of you know who's really got the best shot. Right now we're all all going on on, on polling, which you know changes. But we start getting in the primaries, then then we will finally figure out who's our, our strongest candidates are. Do you know number two in-, this in paranoia, uh, I think this the, a lot of this paranoia uh, about, oh, too many candidates, um, I think we've seen that before. I'm just thinking more and more about the situation in 2008 and all the fact, oh, it's, you know, the, the, the candidates are going to kill each other and we're not going to, uh, you know, have a, you know- But do we know, in reality have too many candidates? I mean- uh, we have a handful of candidates who are people are paying attention to, and the rest all seem to be stragglers. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, I think we're going to see Cory Booker getting out of the race soon. Uh, mainly, it's a money thing with him, you know? Well, it's a money thing with, with all of them. I mean, you know, if they can't raise the money, but, uh, but they're going to be out. You, you, but, know, you know who's number two but, right, right now in the polling in Iowa? What's that again? You know who's number two in the polling in Iowa now? Uh, Sanders? Judge. Buttigieg. Oh, he is? Okay. Yeah. I think, you know, slow and steady wins the race. And he's uh, he's doing oh, he's doing okay, you know? I still say that, you know, if you're going to throw somebody up against Trump, I think he could I think he could eat Elizabeth Warren alive just because of his blowhardness, okay, and the fact that she's got way too much dignity, you know. Um, oh, about that. Well, uh, I, 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 you know, it's a, it, it, it's a different set of rules now on how you win an election, you know, and a lot of it has to do with, um, uh, it, a lot of it has to do now with a, uh, a, uh, 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 being boisterous and or having something going for you that you know Trump can't fight and I think Buttigieg has a lot of Teflon going for him 
I mean, what is Trump going to put down about Buttigieg? That he's gay? That would be in terrible taste, wouldn't it? I mean, it's very hard to parse that one. Okay? And everything else, what are you going to put him down for? Oh, he was in the military? What a sissy. Three times? Oh, what a sissy. You know, come on. Uh, oh, he's a, a Rhodes Scholar. He's went to Harvard. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the guy has all the goods. And there's, it's pretty hard for Trump to go against that. And then you add to that the fact that, in fact, he's young. You know, and put him up against the big fat slob whose tie is way too long. And uh, what do you got? You know? Well, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, see. Yes, uh, uh, Jeff. Teddy Roosevelt was the youngest president, mm -hmm. as I remember. Was he really? Mm -hmm. He always looked kind of old, didn't he? I know. But, you know, <laughs> but everybody, looked, everybody looked older back then. 42 or something. Really? I'm not sure. Or 40. Well, Buddha, 40. He, well, he got in because he was vice president and, and McKinley was assassinated. So, so, so he... he, I, he I had nothing to do with it. Buttigieg, <laughs> Buttigieg. I wasn't blaming you. <laughs> Buttigieg has done pretty... I just say that he, that he, yeah. he came in, uh, not through an election, but through... Uh, you know, through assassination. Buttigieg yeah. has done did pretty well on uh, on fundraising. Yeah, uh, he's done very well on fundraising, and he's really run a very smart, slow but steady campaign. And I just think that you know, I mean, I think he's kind of Teflon to Donald. I, Donald's going to find a hard thing to grab onto. You know, what's he going to do? Say, you're going to vote for that fairy? I don't think so. You know, I don't, I, even at his worst, Trump can't come up with that one. He knows that that's, that's not a, would not be the right thing to do. What can he assail Buttigieg for? He doesn't have experience? Well, you didn't either, Donald. <laughs> you know, and at least he runs a city. You never ran anything except the right. losing corporation. Mm -hmm. And exactly. al also the other thing, and I think this is a Achilles heel that I think that the Democrats really haven't hit harder upon. You don't say, I don't want people to see my tax returns unless there's something in that tax returns you don't want the people to see. <laughs> I mean, the biggest fight that he fights every day is keeping his taxes from being revealed. Mm -hmm. He goes yeah. to court on it. He spends money uh, in courts on it. He takes it to the Supreme Court. He does, I mean... Well, he's taking it to the Supreme Court. They haven't heard it yet. Yeah, but why in the world, if you don't have something to hide, do you not want people to see your tax return? When that's the one thing... I think thing, eventually it'll yeah. come out. I think eventually it'll oh, come eventually out. Oh, eventually it's going to come out. Heel. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, what is there in his tax records? in his taxes, that somehow smells, okay, mm -hmm. and that he doesn't want anybody to see. And I thought it was somewhat telling when um, Mario Cuomo came out and said when, he, when Trump announced he was changing his place of domicile to, uh, to Florida, although I thought he lived in Washington, but I may be mistaken, uh, 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 Cuomo said, well, you don't pay any taxes here anyway, so good riddance. Well, that, that's kind of telling that there's something they see there that, you know, that mm -hmm. there is something very, very important. And if he thinks by moving to Florida, he's getting away from a tax wrap that they're going after now, he's, no. he's, he's getting bad, uh, bad advice because it's just not true, you know. Uh, did somebody have his hand up? The guy may not have enough money to show that he's a, a billionaire. Mm -hmm. I think he's not a billionaire. Well, I, that, that is a that, big loser for for Trump. Yeah, yeah. What you're gonna say, Tom? 
Tom? Yeah, that's actually uh, uh, Willie Brown. That he he said, I don't want. To, I never wanted to show my taxes anywhere, any either, because I didn't want people to know how poor I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And that's exactly. I I think that a lot of it is he had does not have the amount of money he says he's got. Well, Trump's entire business in later years wasn't real estate. It was putting his name on buildings he didn't own mm -hmm. and leasing out his name. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was based upon the Mr. Monopoly image that he had, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because you put him on the apprentice and there he is. He's the big businessman telling you, you're fired and, you know, whatever. And he's supposed to be a multi-billionaire and he knows how to make money and so well, if it turns out that he doesn't really know how to make money, and that in fact he owes a lot of it, and uh, you know, uh, uh, I think that uh, that 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 would the public would take that in not well. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Tom. Yeah, actually, uh, last year I read this book called uh, Trump Nation by uh, Timothy O'Brien, mm -hmm. and it it covers that 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 time period. I think it was published in about 2006, but talk about how he was able to use that boost he got from The Apprentice to start licensing his name, and that basically became his his business, his shtick, is 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 that uh, licensing. Well, this guy was making so much money off his properties and so on. Why was he selling steaks and ties? Mm -hmm. You know, why was he starting Trump University? I mean, th that's not what you do when you've got a lot of businesses going that you have to spend time on. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't wheeling and dealing any big deals in the last couple of years. The biggest deal he had was that TV show. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that made him a lot of money because he was able to, to turn out books and ties and stakes and, you know, that bogus Trump University and all, all that other crap, you know. Then when he lost that, which he lost because he couldn't do it and be pre run for president of the United States at the same time. Because <laughs> it's funny, if he were to have run for president and still been on The Apprentice, uh, they would have had to give every other candidate a show of their own on NBC at the time because that's that's kind of the rules, you know. So it's mandatory that you quit being doing your TV show when that happens, you know. Uh, and by the way, he talked about how successful The Apprentice was. And I got news for you. You know, the last season of The Apprentice was sat on the shelf for two years. They just, they did it. And they said, eh, it doesn't get good ratings, let's not run it. And then when they saw there was a hole in their schedule, they ran it. In fact, the one with Gilbert Godfrey had been done years before, a couple of years before it ever got aired. Uh, so um, uh, that was not a successful show at that point. It was a successful show, I think, in the first couple of years that it was on. And then it just started tanking and was used as a filler when they had a vacancy because they canceled some drama show, it was costing them a fortune, and this was a very cheap show to produce. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> successful television personality. Yeah. yeah, yeah, con artist. Oh well, I mean, he's a con artist. He's a, he's a, also a very dangerous man at this at this point. You know, yes. He's yes. Very dangerous. Uh, you know the, the decisions he's made in 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 the world and the world's attitude now towards us, mm. which uh, I would hope that if somebody else got elected, a uh, Democrat got elected, that then the, our stock in the world would turn around. But I don't think it's going to be that easy. Yeah. yeah. I think America's no, gonna, yeah, America's going to have a bad reputation for years to come. I'll be long gone, and maybe some of you guys will be too before we ever see this country have a turnaround on the international stage. Yes, Tom. Well, I I hope we can at least get a turnaround right quickly on this decision to get out of the Paris Climate Accord. 
And so that's the reason why I'm really, really determined to get him out of office any way I can. I just uh, never can understand why he wants to get out of the Paris Climate Accord. You know, I mean, what, what about clean air or uh, ecology uh, does not appeal to him? Well, you know, it's funny you should bring that up because <laughs> it gives me the, seg the segue on something I wanted to talk to the reason I came on. Yeah. Um, I just got back from a lecture from one of my favorite climate sciences, uh, scientists, uh, Dr. Catherine Hayhoe. Yeah. And I uh, just got back from a talk from her uh, called Science in a Fact-Free World. And uh, if you don't know of her stuff, she's got... She's got a, a series on YouTube called Global Weirding. She's got all kinds of good videos. She's really a very entertaining and great lecturer as well as being a scientist. Yeah. But a lot of what she was saying was how, how we have been polarized on the climate issue and how we need to start talking about it and recognizing that a lot of the climate denialism is rooted in nationalism. Uh, and this is what Trump is appealing to. He's, he's, um, you know, he, he's staked as, you know, the any immigration and that the that, you know, the white supremacy, the nationalism, and the the climate denial stuff is coming in with it. Uh, it's very fascinating what she had to say. I, I'm still. I wish I, I could. Um, maybe I'll see if I can see if I, I can get her slideshow and see it again, because she had a, just a really fantastic slideshow to go with it. Matt Crash just wrote something here about, uh, about it and said that, Alex, it's simple. The reason he wants to get out of the Paris Accord is because Obama did it. And that's all, yeah, that's part of it, yeah. The, there seems to be this, this obsession with Barack Obama, who basically... Mm -hmm didn't really do anything wrong. He tries to portray him as being, uh, doing something illegal or whatever, you know. I mean, this is a crook calling somebody who was totally honest a crook, you know. And uh, it seems as though, and I think it all goes back, and I, I've said that if I could do a back to the future thing, uh, I would uh, take myself back to the future and go back to the night of the... Um, uh, Washington, uh, Washington White correspondence, House White House correspondence dinner, mm -hmm. uh, where Obama joked about Donald Trump. I mean, everybody jokes about everybody at those things, but apparently Donald can't take a joke about, at his expense. And ever since then, he's been after Trump. That was the mm -hmm. night that he decided he was going to run for president and that he was going to get Trump. I was going to get Obama, you know, and we've been living with that ever since. He's like chasing this ghost of Obama, and if Obama liked the the uh, climate accord, God damn it, you know, he was going to be against it, and down the line, he's against everything that uh, that uh, what's his name that uh, Obama was for. It's really it's really pathetic. Okay, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is the kind of thing we're living with now. We're living with, I mean, I don't think the presidency will ever be the same. Okay? He's taken it down. I don't even care if a good old, a wonderful Democrat becomes president. That office will never be the same. Did we just lose somebody? Yep. Vernon. We lost Vernon. Oh, yeah. boy. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, we just lost Vernon. I don't know what happened to him. He may have, he, he was having some problems with his, you know. Hey, is anybody else going to call? Is anybody else going to call? Because this is getting a little frustrating now, you know. What if you held a program and nobody came? You know, they, they, whatever. So I, you know... Um, I may I may call this quits in a couple of minutes here, not because you guys aren't terrific. Don't take that as an insult, but just that you know, 
Uh, there's just not enough people to do what I call a citizen panel. It's kind of yeah, like could use a few more. A, a citizen tea here is what we're having, <laughs> you know, or a, you know, a few drinks at a bar or something. I don't know, you know. Uh, but I just, you know, um, it, uh, you know, it, it's just uh, I, I just uh, this whole thing with the Obama obsession with him, and just just everything. I mean, I it's going to be years before this country recovers from this. And it was funny because the night that he got elected, girlfriend went, oh my God, he got elected, what's gonna happen? And I went, you know, it's a very resilient democracy we have here and nobody can come in and completely ruin it, especially in four years. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> I was really wrong. This guy has dismantled almost everything, you know, and uh, uh, what he has against clean air is beyond me, you know? I mean, it, the, the fact that he's wedded to coal, which is old technology, which has no place in the future, okay, uh, is beyond me. Oh, he wants to keep those coal miners working. What, you want to send them down into those dirty, rotten coal mines so they can get black lung disease? You know, yeah. what, are you doing them a favor? Well, he hasn't even been successful. The other coal mine, coal company went uh, went bankrupt this past week. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. you know, so be it. I mean, so they're losing their jobs anyway. Huh? So his promises mean nothing. Right. Right. So I, you know, I just uh, I I don't understand why he's wedded to coal as an example. I mean. Uh, is coal the the uh, the fuel of the future? I don't think so. You know, and uh, come on, there are only so many dinosaur dead dinosaurs left. That's going to run out eventually too. You know? Yeah, he's an expert at anachronistic approaches. At, at, yeah, at, at anachronistic approaches, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Everything's well, wacky. Well, listen, I'm going to call this an evening because uh, I, uh, um, you know, uh, I, it, 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 with just two people here, uh, I think this is the least we've ever had at one time. I'm surprised. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, you know, uh, it really is going to have to make me reassess whether I'm going to even continue this or maybe I'll, uh, whether I'm going to do it four nights a week or maybe just do it one night a week or something like that just for kicks okay uh but uh i just uh i'm i'm very disappointed that some people normal people that normally call this program <clears throat> didn't call tonight and uh, you know if, 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 and i don't uh, hopefully i'll be on tomorrow night if my if my doctor says terrible things then i won't be but you know i'm sure it probably will be better than that but you know what's my encouragement folks for coming back here tomorrow night you know uh, my encouragement is two great, two great people, three great people, four great people that we've had on tonight, mm -hmm. uh, which is, of course, uh, uh, Tom Yamaguchi and um, Jeff Zeller and uh, uh, Jeff Stein, rather. I'm just <laughs> giving your wife's name. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes, here comes Vernon again. Here comes Vernon. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, Ver Vernon, are you there? Vernon? Are you there, Vernon? Yeah, there, there he is. He's coming in. Vernon, you're there again, huh? Gee, I was almost going to call the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, you, you know, you're, you're up there in the middle of nowhere for crying out loud. It's, I'm surprised you're getting as good a picture through as you're getting. You know, I don't know how Skype does it, but as bad as sometimes the video, the the, the uh, 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 power, you know, the bandwidth is, somehow the picture is always really good these days. You know, it, you may not, it may be every other frame or every tenth frame or something like that, but it's a good solid picture. Well, I'll keep going here. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? You know, Why not? <laughs> uh, but I just, you know, oh, here uh, now Kevin's calling. Oh, OK. All right. So, so now we're going to have now we're going to have a program, huh? 
Now I can't sign off till till one o'clock in the morning. Uh, let me You're see here. You're screwed. Huh? You're screwed. Oh, what do you mean I'm screwed? You ain't going nowhere, Alex. Oh, you what? You're not, <laughs> you're not letting me go anywhere? Gee, I, I was going to get to bed early so that I could. Well, I was I, just about to, you know, sit down, and I thought, no, he's he's whining again. I got to get back on there, and I'll give him a half hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you'll give me a half hour. Well, you see, I mean, tomorrow I I'm going to hear from my doctor about this PSA test, and I'm all bothered by it, which I probably shouldn't be. You just go, well, whatever it's going to be, is what it's going to be, and it'll, it'll take care of it, right? Okay. You know, stop that. First of all, stop that right now. Well, yeah, but I let it terrorize me. Well, okay, what was your number again? Or do you want not not want to talk about I it? I had a six seven. Oh Jesus Christ! Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> what? You want to see mine? What's yours? Mine was eight. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, and what are they doing about it? Not a fucking thing. They said go see your urologist in a month. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yes, Jeff. I had a question for, for Kevin. Yeah. Are you still taking that uh, electronic pain redu reduction? Yeah, yeah, it's still in me. I, it's it's in there for good. Oh, really? And yeah, yeah. it's working. It's, you know, working okay. I got I haven't been down to get reprogrammed lately. He Since he's July. Pick, he's picking up HBO for free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I got. I, I'm getting reprogrammed uh, next week. The the rep changed. the The good rep that I had uh, bailed out on the company, so I went through this this transition, and I'm finally finding out who the new rep is. So <clears> I got to get them caught up. Is but that... yeah, it, it it it's you know it works. I've I've caught myself a couple of times letting it go dead. Yeah. And I realize, you know, after a couple of days, I go, crap, you know, it uh, feels like crap. And then I go check my little gizmo and it's do not you realize? Do you realize what you're saying, though, Kevin? Uh, and, yeah. and I, I imagine Jeff, to a certain extent, can say this as well. When I was a kid and I knew and somebody had um, uh, something like you have inside of you, uh, he'd be considered an android. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, this is the stuff of science fiction, yeah. and and now it's you know, it, 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 it maybe it's not totally perfected, but long after you're gone, a hundred years from now, imagine the kind of things they're going to be able to do. You oh know? yeah, a heart. You don't need a heart. You know, well, you, you, look at the stuff. Uh, what is it? Not in the Mayo Clinic, but uh, what's that place up by you, Jeff? The uh, it's the Poly. Polytech, I think it is. They're actually making people walk with prosthesis through their brains. Yes, they can think, I've heard that. Yeah, they can think that they want to move their legs, and their legs are moving. Ooh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, yeah, uh, it's automation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love this. Stuff. Yeah, and it only costs five hundred thousand dollars. We've got a pacemaker right here. Yeah. And that's that's really keeping my heart uh, to work at the right time. Yeah. If you didn't have a pacemaker in you right now, would you be dead? Probably. Really? Either that or loaded up with some drugs, right? I don't know if that would necessarily work. Yeah. Yeah. It all it all depends on you know what you I mean, got. I've had pacemakers for a long, long time, so. Uh, yeah, and they've gone that's from this just, big down to this big down to this big, you know. It's, it's just like it's, your cell phone. you got to have a battery, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you don't have a phone. Well, how do they recharge your battery? Well, after a number of years, they'll they'll take it out and put a new one in. Oh, oh really? Is that an operation or is it very simple? Is it... It's a simple surgery. Yeah. Because the wires are, are there. Because right? I, I was led to believe that some pacemakers are charged by just induction. No. No? Yeah, mine is, but I, I still have to have the battery replaced about every 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I got a little, you know, pad, like a, like a wireless iPad charger or yeah. a wireless uh, I mean, there are yeah. iPhone charger. Yeah. Same thing. 
he tells me not to charge my phone on it. It's like I have this. I have up. this for my watch. Okay. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing, yeah, and I gotta yeah. sit on it every couple of days. And... It's in. <laughs> Why is it in your ass? No, it's in my back. <laughs> <laughs> Can you charge your car too with that? What's that? You know, if you run out of gas, could you recharge your car? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> they told me not to do, not to put my phone on it because it'll blow up the phone. But so I don't know how what, what kind of amperage it puts out. Yeah. Interesting. But uh, uh, gee, when I think about uh, all the different little problems each of us have here. Uh, Tom is the only healthy one in the batch. Am I right, Tom? Mm. Yeah, I don't really have anything really bad going wrong with me right now. Really? Son yeah. of a bitch. Well, you know, well, then I'm going to have to say goodnight to you because you can't be on this program. <laughs> Let's see. I've got neuropathy and I've got uh, 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 possible prostate cancer. Uh, Jeff has a, a, a phony uh, a heart. Uh, uh, Vernon went through prostate cancer. Uh, you don't have any current problems, do you, uh, Vernon? No. And Not at all. Uh, and Kevin's don't even got take this. Any statins. Huh? What? I don't even take statins. Really? Huh? That's amazing. That's amazing. And Kevin is the. Uh, Kevin's a medley of problems. I'm I'm just yeah. I'm just a, a wreck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, um, uh, uh, but a heck of a nice guy. And I think that says something, you know, for it by a freight train. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, how old are you, Kevin? I I've asked you this before, but I, of course, at my 62. age is 62. Um, um, uh, so going on 80, y y well, you've got a lot of problems for 62, you know? Um, yeah. And they only really started coming on the last Eh, eight or ten years. Uh, best about ten years, twelve years. It was was when, the, when this the leg started acting up. That's when everything started going haywire. Yeah, yeah. What was the leg thing basically? Well, that was when it got infected in two thousand eight. Oh, right. During right. those during that surgery thing. Wow. So and, and you know we we got and Jeff. You know it's funny. You talk about surgery causing your problem. Jeff in his case was taking what drug? Coumadin. Coumadin. Yeah. And that's what gave him the stroke. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean. I was taking that, too. You know, I'm wondering what, what this uh, Lyrica is going to do for me now, this pregabalin. It's like. Oh, uh, yeah, that Lyrica stuff was bad on me. Really? What did it do? Uh, it made me really loopy. Well, it, made me, it makes, me, makes me nice and high. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and, it, it, and it, it puts I me to it sleep. I had when it first came out. And I couldn't take it for about, I took it for about three weeks and I said, get this stuff away from me. And then they gave me Cymbalta and uh -huh. it did the same crap. It made me even weirder. They all, well, they all do that. But I, from what I've been told, I read about it. Uh, eventually I'm going to not get loopy on this. After about yeah. f four weeks or five weeks, you suddenly don't get loopy on it. But um, uh, it, it puts me to sleep very nicely. You know, yeah. puts me out. But the thing I've noticed, and this is something that's worrying me, because I love to worry. Okay, <laughs> I'm preoccupied. I've always been a hypochondriac, so why not continue even at this age? In fact, now I have you every reason to be. Okay, uh, now all my imaginary ailments are real ones. But anyway, um, uh, uh, I um, uh, what was I going to say? I, I went into a riff and then I about completely your riffed. Huh? What? Lyrica. About your lyrica. Yeah. yeah. Um, the um, it puts me sleep. Okay. Every night, just go right out. But, oh, the thing that worries me about it is, I suddenly thought about the other night. I haven't been dreaming. Mm. You know, I I can't huh. I can't remember the last time I had a dream. Must be really deep sleeping. Is that what is deep sleep when you don't dream? I don't know, maybe, or it's putting you so far under you can't remember them. Yeah, yeah. I think you're most likely you're dreaming, but you're not remembering your dreams. Yeah. Oh, really? I think you know the dreams you remember are the ones that you have just before you wake up, right? Uh, I don't know when that happens. To be honest with you, it appears that it's like when you just before you wake up. 
but it may not be because you don't know when in your sleep pat you know what i'm saying i mean uh, i i it always appeared that way and in fact sometimes you would wake up from a dream it would just you know mm -hmm. yeah um, I've gone through periods. I've gone through periods where you know I say, "Well, I can't remember the last time I remembered a dream." By the way, know? we've lost Vernon again. Vernon again. Yeah. 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 So I wouldn't worry too much about that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, no. I just I just wonder why. You know, I'm thinking maybe it's these it's these pills. You know, but I'll tell you what it has been doing tonight. I started the show and I fucked up like crazy, getting it on. Uh, people won't notice it if they're watching the the replay because I started the recording right, so I got a good clean Oops. beginning. But I had all kinds of things go wrong, and it's because for some reason this pregabalin is like muddling me a little bit, you know, so that I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to go push this button and that button, and it it's not as easy. It's it's kind of like, you know, and I and so, uh, but I got the show on finally, and eventually when we, the live feed will be edited so that it looks fine. But I just, you know, I I those are things I never used to screw up on, and now yeah. I'm screwing up on them like crazy, and also I find with the pre gabbling, I bump into things. They mess with your neurology, I think. Yeah. yeah. But I'll tell you, my neuropathy feels a lot better. I mean, my feet yeah. are still numb, but my toes aren't hurting and so on. So, And I only take like one a day on the weekdays because I don't want to do one like at 1 o'clock in the afternoon because I'll come on here and just be completely loopy. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, I, I have to say that it is helping. <laughs> it is making me more comfortable. So... What can I say? You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever works, I guess. Yes, whatever works. Uh, whatever you can tolerate, that's yeah. the thing. Some of that stuff I just couldn't tolerate. Yeah. Uh, don't leak your bat battery internally, Kevin, it says. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I won't be able to tell. <laughs> Use your cell phone to defibrillate. <laughs> Clear. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe there is a little app for that. <laughs> you know what I was wondering? Uh, I don't know. Any of you have the, uh, I have to say it quietly, the echo? Any of you have the echo? No. Okay. Because There's I. There's one in my house, but I don't use it. They, I'll tell you, I use it for everything. Like, uh, you know, um, echo, turn off the studio. Well, let me try that again. There we go. Yeah. There it goes. Okay. Took her a second. Echo, turn on the studio. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I use it. I, I use it for that. I've got the lights in the in the cup pantry, and I tell it to turn on the lights in the pantry or the lights in the other room. Uh, and I I don't have enough uh, because of the nature of this apartment. I don't have that many things that I could do like that. But I went out. And I bought light bulbs that have Wi-Fi in them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so some of my lights that I have in the house, but it, not enough. there's not enough of it that I can do that in the apartment. But I've got about four to five different things hooked up to where I can ask them to turn it on and off. Um, but I was wondering, because these Echoes, or let's say the Alexas, I'll call them that because it doesn't respond to that name. Uh, the Alexas... Um, all have, most of them now, have cameras in them. And I'm wondering why you can't just call into that camera and see what's going on in your house when you're away from it. They, they haven't even done that yet. And I'm sure they can, because if I can do, I can do Skype on here. Um, and so we can have, I can have a two-way with somebody over the Internet. So why shouldn't I be able to say, okay, I want to see uh, th this particular room's camera or whatever? You know, here comes Vernon again. Uh, Vernon, 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 be having some problems tonight, right, Vernon? They all yeah, have cameras sure in them. 
Uh, most of them have cameras in them. The old ones, the old original uh, Alexa tube doesn't, yeah. and the dot doesn't. But uh, the one I have here does, and the one I have in my bedroom does, and the one I have in the kitchen does that has a camera. So uh, shouldn't it seem logical that the people at Amazon could create an app that would allow you to go, go into your camera yeah, and, see your, and see your I house? I think that's what they were for. No, what they're for is that uh, I have a camera. I spy so, on you in your bedroom. Well, no, but, I, but you can call me. I have a private Skype account, and it's hooked up to this. And you, if you called me on that private Skype account, I could talk to you on my, uh, on my. I'm saying Alexa. It's really heck. Yeah, off, yeah. You know, um, but I don't know why um, 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 it, it doesn't allow me to do that. You know. Uh, and, and I think it's only a matter of time when they will allow you, but I think they don't want to allow you to do that because they're afraid you will then be paranoid that people can then look at what's happening in your apartment. And if people want to watch me naked, I don't give a shit. It's their problem. <laughs> it's their, like it's their lunch they're going to have to throw up, not mine. Exactly. You know, yes, Jeff. Where, where I live, uh, it's all 55 plus uh -huh. and also there's the golf course yeah which are totally different people and um there's a lot of scope there's a lot of phone um there's a lot of people around there mm -hmm. who have films on all every day at night. Oh, you, oh, you mean you, they have cameras? There's cameras. There's yeah. video cameras on all over the place. And there's some of them that people are aware of. Mm -hmm. But I know there's a whole bunch of them that nobody knows that they're really there. Yeah. And uh, I guess it's somewhat of a safety issue. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, somehow I think the reason they aren't doing this with with the with the Alexas or with the Amazon devices, I'll use yeah. that term, is because they're probably afraid the public will be paranoid by that. Because if you can do it, then somebody else can do it. You know, somebody can hack it and then see inside to your apartment. But I think it would be important because some people want to you know, be able to see around their house while they're on vacation. And that would be a yeah, perfect way no, to be able to no do it. It's no different than a nest or anything else. I mean, you connect your, you can connect your nest or whatever up to that Alexa right. as Ex well. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. what the hell's the difference than just going directly from the, from the device itself? Right. Well, I mean, it has a camera and I don't even use the camera that often, <clears throat> yeah. you know, so let's find you don't have one of those vacuum machines, do you? What do you mean vacuum machines? The iRobots? A robot. Oh, you, the mean the, uh, oh, you, mean, oh, you mean the Roomba? Roomba. Yeah, it's called Roomba. No, I don't. No. Yeah, I don't either. No. No. I, I would if I had cats because I'd want something to terrify them. I keep, <laughs> trying, yeah. I keep trying to get my wife to let me get one. Yeah. Oh, when I go to the supermarket, they have one there. They have in the room, in the supermarket, they have a Roomba? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a commercial size, but yeah. Really, and you're just walking down the aisles, and it's following you. What what what's with that? It's cleaning the the floor. Really? Yeah, yeah. my friend, my More friend, one, they called it they called it Rosie, and it ran around and just go clean up after the dogs. <laughs> the dog said, "Oh, there goes Rosie." Oh my! Oh my! Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, and when it got full, it just go park itself and empty itself out. Yeah. But now my wife, is, my wife is giving me a bad time, okay? And the bad time she's giving me is I went out. I'm at, I'm at, I'm at Costco, and I look, and it says, uh, hey, these are bulbs that you can use, and they have Wi-Fi in them, and then you can hook them up to your Amazon device, and you can have it turn your lights on. And so I bought 22 bucks for two bulbs. And the bulbs are LED, so they're going to last probably longer than me, okay? So, okay, well, that's not bad for the price, right? So I get them, and I like them, and I decide, well, maybe I want to put some lights in the ones in the bathroom. And she's saying to me, 
don't waste all that money. We need it for our old age. And I'm no. saying, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, wait a minute. Twenty-two <laughs> bucks. If the difference between us and starving is twenty-two bucks, we better stop eating now. You know, I mean, um, uh, I said no. You know, I, I get, I have, I have get a little thrill out of this, and I got these little, little, uh, what do you call it, receptacles that you put in, and then you plug something into them, like the light, and that's another company, and and so now I'm, I'm slowly getting the house wired so that I can. Uh, and she goes, I hate this, but then she loves the fact that in the bedroom she can turn off the light without having to get up to turn it off. So she 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 even uses it and likes it, you know. And hey, if you guys are waiting for old age, you're already there. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're say, I'm there. And then then she says something. I mean, you know, this is this is the part that kind of gets to me. Uh, uh, she says to me, I tell her, you know, I've got some savings. I've got some my Vanguard account. I've got my uh, uh, pension from the union, and I've got my. Uh, I've got my I've got some stock from Sirius XM that uh, every year I have to keep selling off and I sell it off and it's kind of like sourdough yeast in California it keeps replenishing itself you know uh, and and so I said, I got some money there and she says well don't use it because I may need it once you're gone <laughs> I went oh so now we figure I'm going first. <laughs> you know, and it's like there are the two people in this household looking at each other saying, well, who's going first? <laughs> you know, <laughs> after Not you, me. you know. Um, and I, I go, I thought you said, she She said she was going to go before me, you know. And, uh, and I, you know, I mean, I, if we had a suicide pact, I'd say, well, you jump first, you know. Uh, and then I'd make my decision whether I wanted to or not. You know, that's just me. Uh, but we, we would be lousy in a, in a suicide pack. You know? uh, just just kidding. I just put the gun in my mouth, but I'm not pulling the trigger yet. Go ahead, pull yours first. You know. Um, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering at what point, uh, you know, like I, I have this great fear of death that at what point I would probably, suicide would seem like a good idea, you know. I mean, um, you know, I mean, I, I don't even think with a really terminal disease I would be up for that. Uh, although my ex-wife says if it gets bad enough, she's going to do it because in Oregon they have the death with dignity thing. We have in California, too. Oh, you have it now in California? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we did have they, it. Did yeah. they pass that? Yeah. Yes. When was yeah. that? Last year. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know they did that. Yeah. Yes, I believe they, I, I believe they have. Yeah. So does that mean that you stop taking uh, medications and, and all? No, you actually get a series of pills, and you got to apply for psychological testing and go through a bunch of stuff, and then you just have this pill sitting around. And when you decide, you it go. isn't one pill though. I heard it was something like fifty pills. Well, uh, I I think it's different. I don't I don't know. I my friend was doing going through that process, but he passed away before he got to that point. Before he could take the last pill. I mean, if he, no, if before he even pills. got yeah. he, he had gone through the psychological part and he was getting ready to get the the pills, and then he passed away from the ALS. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in that case, you'd really want it, you know. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Tom. Well, actually, I had a friend uh, also had ALS, and uh, at one point, he had made the decision that he was going to just disconnect his respirator, and uh, that would have done it right there, but uh, he changed his mind, and which was nice, because there's a whole bunch of... Uh, he lived up in um, Lake County, up at uh, uh, Lakeport, mm -hmm. and so there was a whole bunch of us that uh, were able to go up and see him. Uh, before he died, but uh, he did, you know, die, but he didn't uh, actually uh, disconnect his respirator. But, yeah. But. You know, well, you know, I, I keep, the, the great worry I have is I have a great fear of death, as you know, as I've explained before, uh, mm -hmm. and so that, that bothers me. But I'll tell you what bothers me more is I saw my mother get old, get dementia, wind up in the old people's home, you know, 
I, I don't know if I want that to happen either. You know, I don't know if I want that vitality to go away, for me to lose my vitality enough where I've got to be put in an old people's home, you know. Uh, right. uh, yeah. And that I don't know the world around me, and I'm just an existing organism. Yeah. You know. Uh, well, one of the things that, you know, I think that I feel really fortunate is both my parents died without them actually being put away in a home, mm -hmm. you know, that they, they died in their own home. Right. Uh, well, my father actually died in the hospital, but uh, yeah. but they, they, weren't, they weren't under any long-term you know, decline like uh, like other people. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they have uh, Marjorie has been paying for long term insurance, which is the worst thing you could possibly get because you don't. Let's say she gets run over by a truck tomorrow. Well, there's the money down the drain and she can't stop tomorrow because then she doesn't get any of it back. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it's a sucker's bet. That stuff. Hey, listen, there's the theme, and we made it through the whole show, and it's been, uh, you guys have been terrific, you know? Um, and Kevin, thanks for coming in and forcing me to go another half hour. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, You'll be back. Vernon, always a pleasure to have you around. You are a, uh, a, 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 a balm for the soul. Uh, uh, Tom? Of course, good friend from years and 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 years and, years and a few years after that. And of course, uh, Jeff, my best to your wife, and always good to see you around here. I think it would be nice if uh, all of you just uh, like gave a, a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye to you as well, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, uh, we'll be back here again tomorrow night, I think. If I get a bad uh, news from my doctor and I'm too depressed to do a show, I won't do it. But chances are I'll be here, as usual. I'll be here after Damian Chaplin does the exchange at 9.30 Eastern Time. I'll be back here again at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Same time. Same station in life, and in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>